Starting tomorrow, I'm no longer just a shipping clerk. I'm chairman of the board. And it's all because of... Freaking.com You have the presence of these ethnically homogenous, sort of restive uh, northern states uh, that are forced to send a lot of their wealth to poor uh, southern states. That phenomenon is sort of writ large in the United States, but it was personified in Yugoslavia by one republic, Slovenia, which was the one, uh, the north, northernmost Yugoslav Republic, the only one that was ethnically homogenous. And I hate having to interject ethnic equations into anything, because to me, ethnic, ethnicity doesn't mean that much. But I've learned the hard way that it does mean a lot to a lot of other people, and I, ha I, I just can't ignore that. That would be doing what the old Yugoslav government did back in the 70s and 80s, and we saw where that took us. Uh, but in, in in the United States, you have the uh, Slovenian uh, type situation playing out, really almost all the way across the north. Uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, probably personify it best. Those are two places that are so similar to Slovenia; it's just crazy. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming is almost like the American version of Yugoslavia <laughs> has the has this sort of. Uh, uh, Slovenia type block in it, but I often think of New Hampshire as being uh, America's uh, Slovenia most closely personified. And like Slovenia, if we were the first to go, it would drag the whole country uh, into uh, disintegration, probably the same way that the Slovenian departure did in 1991. And what do you do when the situation's so bad that disintegration almost looks better than what we have now? A torture state <clears throat> that, in its size and scope, makes Milosevic's Serbia look like a very limited threat indeed. Oh, I keep <clears throat> the similarities are so many that I keep thinking I'm done with this uh, story, and I set down the microphone, and then I have to pick it back up because I remember another similarity that had slipped my mind. And here's the, the next one, which may not be the last one. Uh, Serbia, um, like um, <clears throat> Nazi Germany, uh, and like the U.S. now, was the strongest power in the conflict, but perceived itself as very weak. Uh, it perceived itself, it, pe people in Serbia tended to perceive themselves as the aggrieved party, which they were in World War II, <laughs> but, but uh, they weren't the ones that were being mostly targeted uh, or abused in uh, uh, the 1980s. I mean, sure, every ethnic group had legitimate grievances in Yugoslavia to some extent, but the Serbians were the ones who were usually, the, you know, they were the, they were the most powerful uh, and closest to being dominant in Yugoslavia. In fact, <clears throat> that's why they had this saying that a, a weak Serbia is a strong Yugoslavia and that's why there was so many steps taken by the Repub by the uh, by the Federal Republic to keep Serbia in check because naturally Serbia was just as full of strong-willed people and it made up almost I think half the population of Yugoslavia so it just it would be like it would be like if New England were a country by itself it, it would it would tend to be a little bit dominated by Massachusetts because of the heavy population but if you add to that, you know, the, the, the really terrible conflicts that had occurred just 50 years earlier, or 40 years earlier, and the uh, strong-willed nature of the Serbian people, um, it, it just made for a more uh, uh, dangerous mix. And again, th again, the similarity, though, is that the U.S., when it looks at itself around the world, it sees itself as some kind of a victim, as being, you know, oh, we're not strong enough, even though their military is, is completely dominant, there's still this sort of inferiority complex that sort of seeped into the American culture, and the same sort of thing happened in Serbia. So again, yet another similarity with a place you don't want to be similar to, at least not in all respects. I love Serbs. I imitate and idealize 
Nikola Tesla and Milo Vangelis every day. But you don't want to be like you don't want to be like the Republic of Serbia, circa nineteen eighty nine. That's very bad. Yeah, oh, geez, and that's given me another idea for a, a similarity, or it's reminded me of another similarity. Serbia uh, of old, like the U.S. of old, had a pretty special and, uh, I don't know, legitimate mission in the Balkans, I guess you could say. Uh, a lot of very legitimate grievances. It was her mission to put an end to the uh, Turkish Empire and its dominance of the, of the Balkans. It was her mission to fight very effectively against Austrian uh, tyranny that followed and the German tyranny that followed, to make a stand against expansionist Islam, uh, and uh, even up into the uh, the early part of the of the uh, Yugoslav wars, there was still a, a legitimate concern and grievance, in the sense that you 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 know you have you had the Serbian people about to be flung into many different countries where this before they'd all been in one country basically. There was nothing wrong with being concerned about this. There might not necessarily have been anything super wrong about having a war um, to uh, to protect Serbian interests, uh, but it, again, it was it was the the way that it was done, the the fact that it was uh, not really necessary. There was probably other ways to to make um, Serbian aims achievable, and you'd have you would still have Serbs living all over Croatia and all over. Um, <clears throat> uh, the Muslim parts of Bosnia, they ended up getting themselves kicked out by overreacting to their own concerns. Again, how much of this sounds kind of similar to the U.S.? You know, perfectly legitimate grievances the U.S. has always had. Uh, it, traditionally, it hasn't really overplayed its hand. Uh, but something just happened. You know, one day the country just went insane. And it was it was 9-11, mostly. Uh, the country just went crazy and went on this 10, 12 year crusade against everybody, just like Serbia. I just hate all these comparisons. But they keep coming to me. Driving in circles around Central Keen, I hurl both insults, angry and mean. Against the activists from Free Keen, uh, who wander around thinking as though they were free, and even though they aren't hurting me, I will hate them hatefully, urging their appearance in the penitentiary. Although that expense would be charged to me. I'm starting to feel somewhat confusedly.